Hello, I'm Jason at CodeLearner.com. Here we're going to create our first program from within the Eclipse editor that we have just installed. And you'll see how easy it is to do. There are a few gotchas along the way, but everything that we're going to learn in this lesson is going to be what you're going to do every single time you create a new program. So it will become uh, like second nature after a few minutes. So here we have a blank uh, uh, Eclipse editor. And just to kind of show you, uh, in the workspace folder that I'm using, all we have is that metadata directory that Eclipse created. There's nothing else in there. And so, as we talked about before, um, Eclipse is going to organize all of your code. So every um, program that we write is going to be stored in that workspace folder that we have selected. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create a new, so we go to File, New, Java Project. The Java Project is going to be a, a container for our program. So you can think of all of your programs are going to be stored in these projects. So go ahead and hit that guy, and you'll be presented with a dialog box. There's a lot of options here. Uh, many of them don't matter here in the beginning for us because we're really just concerned with getting up and running with understanding the basics of Java. So for the project name, since we're on lesson number seven right now, I'm going to call it lesson uh, seven. And it's kind of recommended that you don't put spaces in your project names. It doesn't matter too much, but I like to go ahead and keep it there. So I'll say lesson underscore seven. Uh, the location for this project is going to be in our lesson workspace, lesson underscore seven. Um, all of this stuff can stay the same and we're going to create separate folders for the source file and the class file. So that means that instead of lumping it all together, Eclipse is going to create a separate folder for the output of the class file. Uh, you can hit the next button and just see what's on the next tab. Basically it's just telling you it's going to create a source folder and the output folder is going to be in the BIN binary. So the binary folder is going to be where the class file is going to be. So go ahead and hit finish and it doesn't look like much has happened. We have something over here in the Package Explorer. So as we go through the lessons here and I start creating new lessons, we'll have lessons going all the way down here and then you can just kind of expand and collapse them. Notice there's a source folder under it and there's also something else under it which is a lot of other supporting items here that, uh, that the Java program will use. So under the source folder you've got Basically, it's empty right now because we haven't done anything yet. So let's go over here and let me go and show you that in our directory, Lesson Workspace. Notice that Eclipse created a directory called Lesson underscore 7. And when you open that, notice that there's a bunch of other little files, class path, project files, uh, and so on. Uh, there's a source folder. This is where our source code is going to go. And after the compile is done in the bin folder, the class file will go there. Now, you understand why I started by showing you the command line, how easy it is just to take a source file, compile, get a class file. Because when you start looking at what Eclipse is doing, it looks a whole lot more complicated. There are all these other things here. Really, these are just supporting directories. Uh, and the basic process is starting with a Java file, ending up with something else uh, called a class file. All right, now in order to do anything, we don't even have any source code file yet. We need to, to create that. And if you remember, I said every Java program is going to have its own class. It's going to be contained in a class. And if you remember that very first example, the class that was defined at the beginning of the file is the same as the file name. So what you do is you go over here. There's two ways to do it. You can right click on lesson seven here and you code new class. We need to define a class which is basically going to be our, our program or you can go to file new class. It's the same thing. And what you have here is a new class wizard. Um, it's telling us that the source file is going to be stored in lesson 7 slash source. And it's asking us what do we want the name of the class to be. Um, well this is basically what is the name of your program. In our very first program we typed into notepad we called it first example dot java. So it's asking us what do you want the name of your program to be. So let's just call it lesson 7 because this is just lesson 7 right. Now it gives us a warning here related to packages being discouraged. This is because Eclipse is, is, is you know assuming that we're creating a more complicated project than we really are. These projects for this video tutorial are going to be so simple that everything can be you know put into the same place without doing the packaging stuff here. It just kind of kind of makes things more complicated than it needs to be. All you really need to do is type a name for the class 
um, leave it on public, and then you want to you want to check this right here: public static void main string args. This is what we typed in. So when we create new programs in Eclipse, we're always going to need a main method. And so this is just giving you a shortcut. It will type all that stuff in and create your main method for you. Again, it's shortcutting the stuff that you have to type in manually whenever you do it in a regular old text editor. Everything else here is you just leave it, uh, leave it uh, uh, the default. So you just want to type in the name of your source code file and hit finish. And then it's going to create the Lesson7.java. Notice what happened is that under the source directory and under this default package area, it has a Lesson underscore 7 dot Java. This is the file that we would have created if we had just gone to Notepad and named it Lesson7.java. In fact, let me go in here and show you inside the workspace there's Lesson7, right? Remember there's a source code directory. Inside the source code directory is our Java file. And if you double click this, it'll open in Notepad, and this is what has been automatically generated by Eclipse, right? This is what we would have typed manually. So let's go back over here and see what Eclipse did. First, it tells us there's a public class, uh, lesson underscore seven, right? There's a open and curly brace. Remember, we saw that from before, and there's a corresponding closing curly brace there, right? Everything that the program uh, has is contained between uh, these curly braces and inside of there is a is a main method that has the same public static void stuff that we had talked about from before all right and then we have the string args we're going to talk about what all this stuff means here in a few minutes but the point is this is automatically generated here now one thing I want to tell you anytime you see a slash with an asterisk and then closed with an asterisk and a slash this is just a comment all right so there's some automatically generated comments here you can put some uh, some comments to yourself here in the beginning of the uh, program. We don't need them, so I'm going to delete them. Also, if you see a double slash like this, this is also a way to write a comment here. I can uh, type anything I want here, and it will be ignored by the compiler. So I'm going to delete this here. And so now, I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now you can see that this looks an awful lot like what we typed in in our first example when we did it in Notepad. And in fact, if we go back to that directory, inside of the lesson workspace in the source directory there's a lesson underscore seven java since we saved it this is exactly what we have here all we have is a class definition of our program the name of the class is the same as the name of the file name without the java extension then we have the main method and whatever the program is going to do is going to be fully contained inside this main method so everything that this program is going to end up doing has to be contained within these curly braces, which define the boundaries of the main methods. You can see how Java is organized. Opening curly braces, closing curly braces. They, they kind of form parentheses inside of which your code sits. All right, now we're finally ready to uh, create our uh, program. So let's go ahead and output something to the screen, much as we've done before. So we'll type system. Right, just like we're doing, we'll put the period. And notice that when I put the period, even before I type out, remember it was system.out.println, it's giving me options. So this is one of the nice things about Eclipse, is it's coming in here and it's telling me I have all of these uh, options available under the, under the system heading there. And so I can either type the word out or I can just double click out and it'll put it there for me. So it's constantly trying to remind me options I have. System.out, it's telling me I have print, I have print line, uh, or ln there. I'm going to select print line because that puts a line feed at the end of whatever I'm outputting. So I can either type it or I can double click it, P-R-I-N-T-L-N, open parentheses. Notice that Eclipse also closes the parentheses for me. So it's trying to do these helpful things to me that you would have to remember if you were using WordPad. So I'll open a quote. Note, notice that Eclipse automatically gives me an, another opening quote. I just typed it one time, and the closing quote is automatically placed. So I would say, I love to program. Okay. Now notice that you think you're about ready to run this program, but there's a big X over here. It tells me there's a syntax error, insert semicolon. You can see insert semicolon to complete the statement. Also notice that there's a red squiggly underline here. And there's also a red marker over here. So it's all pointing to the end of the line, telling me I need to remember a semicolon. In Java, all program statements, okay, all program statements have to end with semicolon. So the 
printing things to the screen, variable declarations, things like that need to have a semicolon and it's trying to remind me of all that stuff. So let me go ahead and hit save. All right. And again, if I just want to double check what's happening in the background, this lesson7.java file has been updated because that's what I'm typing into the Eclipse editor. It's all mirroring what I would do manually. Now we have enough to actually try to compile and run this program. Let's see how that works. So there's a couple different ways to do it. The easiest way is just to look up in the toolbar. There's a run button right here. If you drop it down, you can see run as Java application. But really all you need to do is click the button here that says run, click it right there. Notice down here at the bottom of the screen in the console tab, this is telling you what, when I mean console, they're saying uh, the, the MS-DOS window that we were working in before, that's called a console window. And then you have the output, I love to program. So you see, we never have to go to the command prompt. We never have to go run Java C or run the Java virtual machine and all that stuff like we were doing before. I only showed you that to show you what was happening in the background. When you use an Eclipse editor, or any kind of integrated development environment, you basically have the ability to um, type in the code, get some help in typing it correctly, catching your errors, compiling, running the application, and looking at the results all from within the environment. Now let's go take a look before we close the section out. And let's see here. Under the workspace directory, I have a lesson underscore seven. And then when I go in here, there is a bin folder and a source folder. The source folder is where my source file is. The bin folder is where my class file is because remember binary is the byte code and this is the output. So this is the class file. This is what would have been generated by the Java C compiler if we had done it from the command line. This is the file that I can send out to whatever other platform out there. And if they have a Java virtual machine, they can run it. So in this lesson, we're, we're still not getting too deep into the, to the syntax of the Java language. Mostly I just wanted to have a very simple program, we'll type it in there, see how Eclipse handles it, see how to run a simple program, see that you can see your, um, your uh, uh, package and your source code on the left-hand side of the screen there. And what I want you to do now is go off into the exercise directory for lesson seven and go ahead and read what exercise we have in there and try to create your own new project and do it yourself. Programming is 99% practice. I'm going to show you how to do it, but you're going to need to get in there, type things in, make mistakes, figure out what your mistakes are and learn from them. If you don't do that, then you're not going to really, really be able to write code by yourself. So it's a very simple program. Go read the exercise file. Go do the exercise uh, that we have for lesson number seven, and then move on to the next lesson and go step by step mastering your Java programming skills.